Hey folks, it's Jared Manninen from the website TahoeTrailGuide.com. Today I'm combining activities here, running an errand for a friend, testing out some gear that I made for myself, this nifty little camouflage vest to see how it works in coordination with a backpack. Making this video and yeah, doing a little bit of wildlife and bird photography. Hopefully, that's assuming that I actually find wildlife. The question I wanted to answer today with regard to snowshoeing is one that I'm asked frequently, and that's whether or not you need to use hiking or trekking poles while you're snowshoeing. And an easy answer no at least that's a short answer heck you don't even need snowshoes sometimes but hiking poles or trekking poles when snowshoeing are super beneficial I tend to not use them as much anymore generally though that's because I'm lugging this thing around and there's no way that I'm gonna be able to use hiking poles and carry this thing safely and even if i could it would be kind of ridiculous because i'd probably miss most of the bird shots that i could get had this thing been in my hand to begin with last time i was in this area there were a couple of different birds of prey and I was cross country skiing, so I didn't have a good camera. Most likely one was a red tail and one was a kestrel. I can't be certain though, cause they were a little bit too far out of range for my regular vision. And again, didn't have this camera with me. So hopefully I'll see them. And if not, that's okay. Because this is not really skiable terrain at this point. It's just good for hiking and then when I get a little bit higher up in the mountains, I'll strap on my snowshoes. What would be helpful for hiking through terrain such as this, this kind of crunchy, icier stuff, would be some foot traction devices like micro spikes. Fortunately for me, at this point, the terrain is not very steep, so I don't have to worry too much about slipping down any hills or anything like that. But if it was steeper and it was this firm, I would definitely either put on my snowshoes or my foot traction devices. But most likely if it was really hard, I would just go with those foot traction devices. And if it was really steep, I probably would just avoid that terrain feature if at all possible just because there's no sense in taking risk unless you're willing to pay the price. And sometimes that price can be a little bit more than what you're bargaining for. The argument for or against using hiking poles while snowshoeing is about the same argument as whether or not you should use hiking poles while hiking. There's benefits and drawbacks to using them, but overall, if you got any kind of injuries or your balance isn't great, you're not super athletic, Trekking poles or hiking poles can definitely aid in stability while you're snowshoeing, keeping you from falling over because it gives you four points of contact. I also like using hiking poles just because it gives my upper body a workout as well. If you're snowshoeing through firm and consolidated snow, trucking poles aren't necessarily as helpful as when you're going through really deep, soft stuff. For obvious reasons, firm 
stable snow is just more predictable as far as walking so there's less likelihood that you're gonna fall that said if you do find yourself on icier stuff hiking poles can help to mitigate some of your risk just by allowing you to have those four points of contact While negotiating hilly and mountainous terrain, trekking poles can definitely aid in going up and going down. And again, helps. Oof, this is a little bit icy right in here. Additionally, using hiking poles while snowshoeing helps you negotiate other obstacles such as rocks, roots, logs, bushes, that sort of thing. Just gives you more options for climbing over stuff and doing it in a little bit safer manner. Even though it doesn't look like a lot, even trying to hike through snow that's above the ankle can be pretty exhausting. So I'm gonna go ahead and just try to find a dry rock or something and drop my pack, take a break, and then throw my snowshoes on. Watching me put my snowshoes on is about as interesting as watching grass grow. But I wanted to leave this clip in here and just talk about those snowshoes a little bit because they're the type of snowshoes that I prefer. They have a really simplified binding system. As you can see here, it's just basically three straps. And those straps are made of rubber and they have holes in them. And essentially, you just cinch them down to your desired snugness over your boot and then seat a stem in one of those holes on the strap. Very easy to get into and out of, particularly if you have cold and frozen hands. And this is a concept that's important to me when dealing with winter scenarios, is whether or not I can operate the equipment with cold and partially numb hands. There's multiple times throughout each winter that I find myself in a non-life or non-limb threatening situation, but my hands are cold and numb and it becomes very difficult for me to perform simple activities such as operating my digital camera or phone or just trying to put the key into my lock to get back into my vehicle. That's one of the litmus tests that I use when buying or researching winter gear is whether or not it's simple enough that I could do it without needing the finest motor skills under challenging circumstances. The only real drawback that I see as far as using hiking poles while snowshoeing is simply now you have something in your hands and you can't do other things. What crunch crunch. What other things would you be doing? Well that's completely up to you. But <clears throat> it's not really much of a drawback. If you decide you want to take trekking poles with you while you're snowshoeing, I recommend using an aluminum one rather than a carbon fiber pole. The reason I say that is if carbon fiber breaks for whatever reason, it's pretty much useless at that point. Whereas an aluminum one you can still use as a improvised splint or something like that. And it's not quite as much of a mess to carry around with you just because you don't have all the splinters of the carbon fiber poking out and sticking out. That said, I do recommend something with a full basket. You want to be able to maximize the surface area of that basket, especially since you're using a pole to help you go forward. And also using a pole that preferably only has two sections 
to work with, and that has an external locking device. So you can telescope the hole to whatever desired length that you want, but you can do so with cold, numb hands if need be. You could use like the edge of a, of a you know, piece of gear to unlatch that. The other set of poles that I have, or single pole, is a three section hiking pole and it uses the internal barrel uh, tightening system and it's fine for the summer when your hands are generally warm and you can feel what's going on but if you got numb hands and if there's any bit of ice or snow in those barrel adjustments inside that sleeve there's a chance that it could be frozen and it's just really challenging to telescope but you could use them in a pinch if you don't plan on lengthening them or shortening them also for most backpacking oriented hiking poles you can get a snowflake basket it's just a wider full basket that won't penetrate the snow as deep as the regular summer basket even though it has the full basket it still sinks into the snow but it doesn't go nearly as far as if it had a smaller basket like you would find on a summer hiking pole and I didn't do a good job of showing the lever system on this particular one, but a lot of them have this type of a feature where it's just a, a lateral locking mechanism. And you can see there's a defined edge that if you just put it up against something, even a branch or a rock, you can just flip it open and then you can lengthen the pole to your desired length. And then you can push it up against the same object that you use to open it in order to close it and you can pretty much do that with the minimal amount of uh, gripping with your hands again if they were super cold or frozen at that point you needed to for some reason readjust that pole length that pole with the orange lever on it that was actually a backcountry skiing pole and I tend to prefer taking that one with me because again, it only has the two sections, so it's a little bit stronger. And it has that locking mechanism, which is very convenient to use. But I've used my hiking poles, those ones with a barrel tightening system before, and they're fine. It's just like I said, if you need to make any kind of adjustments with them and you got cold hands, it's a real big hassle. And it's just not one that I wanna be dealing with out in the winter. Again, uh, using hiking poles while snowshoeing isn't totally critical, but it does give your arms something to do, a little bit of an upper body workout and provide a little bit more stability. So either use them or don't, it's up to you. That was definitely a long roundabout answer to whether or not you need to use hiking poles when snowshoeing, so I appreciate you sticking around and watching the video as I went on a little snowshoe tour and birding expedition. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or feedback, post it in the comments section below. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out tahotrailguide.com. Take care, everyone. You'll never believe it, but I actually found my little beautiful kestrel here, not on the seven miles of snowshoeing and hiking, but rather on my drive home from the adventure. Lo and behold, there he was sitting on top of a utility pole, and I decided to pull over and follow him around for about 20 or 30 minutes. I managed to get some really nice shots of it, which was a super nice treat for the end of my day.